there are so many skills you need as a camera assistant, but one that you need right off the bat and you need to be really good at and understand is swinging a lens. Now, this is something you don't want to mess up. You need to make sure that the person on the other end has a hold of that lens because you don't want them to drop that. Now, it is always nice to have two people swinging a lens, but sometimes that can't happen. But if we talk about the two-person lens swing, you'll understand the gist of it. So the first AC calls for a lens change. Once they hear the word that they need to change lens, they let the second AC know. Immediately, the second AC will grab the lens case and bring it as close as possible to the camera because you don't wanna be taking something as valuable as a lens out of the case with caps off or whatever you're doing and walk with it quite a distance to get it to the camera. You want everything to be as safe as possible. So keeping it in the case for as long as possible and getting this case as close as possible is key. Meanwhile, the first AC gets ready to remove the lens. So they take the focus wheel away and they get everything off like the map box or whatever accessories are attached so that they can clearly access that lens. But you don't take it off just yet. You need to wait until you get your hands on the new lens so you can swing it over quickly. The less time that the sensor is open to the air, the better, because then you could get a dirty sensor or a damaged sensor, which is even worse. So the second AC pulls the lens out of the case and gets it ready to go. This means removing the caps and holding the lens from the rear element so you can drop it into the AC's hand. Drop it. <laughs> drop it is a bad word. Throw it across the room. So the second AC gets the lens ready to transfer to the camera. This means taking the caps off, both the rear and the front cap, and holding the lens with both hands for now, but focusing on holding the rear of the lens without touching the element, because you are gonna hand it face down to the first AC when they're ready. Now the first AC removes the lens, so they'll be predominantly holding the front element, and they're gonna hand it to you rear element down. A good exchange is saying yours when you're handing something over and responding with got it when you've got a good handle of it. Because if there's not that communication that somebody has a hold of something, it could fall and you could break something. Now a good AC, if you're continuing the same scene and you need the same exposures, will change the lens accordingly before handing it over to the first AC. So because you've taken note and you've probably done camera reports, you'll know that the lens was at a particular stop. You will change the new lens to that stop before handing it over to the first AC so that everything is concise. So for instance, if you know that you were at 2.8 on the lens that you are taking off, you will hand over the new focal length at 2.8 as well. Now as a second AC, when you're putting the lens back into the case, you're gonna to wanna to change it to wide open and set the focus to infinity. That is the way that we store lenses. It's just the safest way for it to travel. So if it gets any bumps or anything like that, the iris blades are all the way out and the focus is set to infinity so that all of the planes of glass are in a good position, a safe position for travel. So that is how to swing a lens safely. Now, one thing I do want to say is when you are storing this case, just a side note that's not really related to swinging a lens, but is related to the safety of your lenses. When you close a case, any case, doesn't matter if it's lenses or not, make sure you latch the case because if a case stays open, somebody knocks it closed, then you're gonna have an issue if somebody thinks that it's locked and then they pick up the case and all of the lenses come flying out. So that can be very expensive and it's really bad practice. So any cases, make sure they are closed and latched. Now, it doesn't matter if it's one or two latches, preferably all of the latches, but at least do one of the latches so that nothing gets damaged. Okay, so considering the length of this video, I'm going to answer two questions today instead of just one. And also both the questions are related to focus pulling, which was last week's video. So let's just answer two questions. The first one I've got here is from Amanda Deary. And Amanda is asking, I've been on some sets where it doesn't seem like the first AC actually measures anything at all. And they just tend to rely on the monitor and pull by eye. Is that to do with the new digital age or is it just bad practice by the first AC? Is it standard practice to measure for focus marks on every shot or is it just the complicated ones? Now, there's a complicated answer to that one. Yes, pulling from monitors is something relatively new, I guess, to the film industry. Like, is on film, you didn't really have the chance to look at a monitor at a live vision of what's going on and have that critical focus 
right in front of you. So you did have to kind of understand the space a lot more. And that is a skill that is lacking these days. A lot of people don't understand focus in terms of the space that you're shooting in. Instead, they just go by the monitor. Just pulling from a monitor doesn't give you the same understanding of space as actually taking focus marks and looking at action does. When you're using a monitor, it can be rather difficult to make quick adjustments if any changes happen, which often does happen. Like if you go through a rehearsal and you realize that the actor's action isn't quite right, it might change and, and then you're in a pickle because you have to take measurements again because you've looked at the monitor. Whereas if you understood the space and understood rough measurements of where those actors are in the space, you could kind of take a guesstimate and then maybe take a better measurement if you think you need it. So monitors are good to work out where your focus is lying and see that right in front of you. But taking measurements and working out the, the scope or the layout of where you are shooting is more important than actually seeing it in front of you on a monitor in a live feed. I hope that kind of makes sense. In terms of taking focus for every single shot, well, I mean, you kind of are anyway, because you kind of roughly pull to it on the monitor. If you need anything critical, that's when you start to really, really refine your measurements. But in most cases, using a laser or using a metal tape measure will work fine. And these things can be done in the downtime in between shooting quite easily and quite quickly. So you really won't have any trouble fitting that into your schedule. You can really do it without interrupting anybody almost. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any further questions, let me know because there was a lot of information right there in that little question. The next question we have here is from Maddie Jade and Maddie is asking, do you have any focus pulling tips for using less professional DSLR lenses without measurements? I've only ever used the monitor to visually assess focus pulls, so I'm not sure if there's a better way to do it when you don't have anything to mark. Is there still a point to measuring the physical distance? DSLR lenses are simply just not designed for video, so getting that critical focus is a little bit more difficult. And because they do have that continuous roll in the focus wheel, you lose your marks very quickly. And because there's no external marks on there, unless there's something like the Rokinon Cine lenses, which are kind of like a hybrid between them both, and they have marks and hard stops, you're gonna have a lot of trouble doing that. Now, there are actually focus wheels out there that have mechanical hard stops that you can program in. So you just move this little notch and it will kind of give you a focus range and then you tighten those off so you've got the hard stops. With those sort of things, you also require getting those little rubber teeth that you put around the lens as well to make those work. But still, those are out there, so there's the option of doing that. But in terms of actually measuring distance, can't really be done with a DSLR lens simply because they just don't have those marks on the barrel, like you said. So you will have to probably use a monitor for that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you later.